Hey everybody. This is vlog 16. Um, it is October 6th, a Saturday. Uh, it wasn't a Saturday four years ago. It was somewhere in the middle of the in the middle of the week. I I, I believe. I'm not sure. It is very foggy, very difficult to pull anything from that time period. Um, but basically sometime around this date, four years ago, in the year 2008, my mind snapped. It broke, fell apart, completely crashed, and when everything booted up again, I was a paranoid schizophrenic. Four years is a long time. It doesn't feel like four years. But at the same time, at the same time, it feels like a goddamn eternity. There were days and nights that lasted forever. There were days and nights that no longer exist. Between now and then. It's very complicated. It's a sob story which I'm not going to tell because I'm not here to tell you a sob story I'm here to tell you the truth and as well as sob stories may be the truth I don't believe they're the correct way to convey feelings sob stories are for people who want sympathy I don't want your sympathy I just don't want the stigma of being someone with a mental illness and that's somehow making me a second class citizen. That's why I've been making all these video logs. That's why I started it. Maybe not with the intention of being an advocate, but maybe eventually becoming one. Like I said, four years is a long time. <coughs> Excuse me. But yet I can remember that particular night very, very clearly up until the time when my mind shattered It was unexpected. I'd had issues with depression and anxiety before, but nothing like this. This was a completely different level. This was something powerful. This was something life-changing. And that's what it's been. I want answers. Not, there aren't any. 
There's no reason behind any of this. They say that this sort of thing could be genetic. Well, there's no one in my past family who has ever been a paranoid schizophrenic but myself. I have family members who have a history of depression, so that probably set me up for a possibility of, a, of the bad end, so to speak. But it's not that I want the pity pool and other people crying or feeling bad for me is, is not going to change the way things are. So, you know, if you do feel bad for me, I salute you. But it's not necessarily needed. Not because I think I'm some kind of warrior who has to live by some code and and can't accept the, the feelings of others is to make myself look less pitiful. No. I'm, again, like I've said before, I'm here to tell the truth. And that's it. And the truth is... Four years later, after being diagnosed a paranoid schizophrenic, I'm still a paranoid schizophrenic, but my symptoms lean more, more towards schizoaffective disorder. But that is a lot of times the result of coming off of paranoid schizophrenia. See, schizophrenia doesn't go away. Once you get it, you got it. Just pretend like it's a tattoo and laser removal did not exist. I'm permanently scarred by this. I don't always show it, but when I do, I, I, I really don't know how to describe it. It's just something that is. The people around me understand. And for that, all those people, my family most, and then everyone else, they all have my thanks and my gratitude. So, I'm going to end on that. So as this message is not too long. But believe me when I say, I do wish things had turned out differently. But they didn't. This is how they turned out. This is how I had to live. And I'll tell you what, I'd be goddamned if somebody is not going to let me live my life. I might be scared. I might be terrified of what is out there.
But that's what I have to deal with. That's the way I have to live. So that's what I'm going to do. So I again say good night. I'll see you guys later.